Hey, good morning. Welcome to 1 Samuel 15. Our reading today is from verse 20 to 29, straight to it. And Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag, king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites, but the people took of the plunder, sheep and oxen, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice to the Lord your God at Gilgal. So Samuel said, As the Lord is great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned around to go away, Saul seized the edge of his robe and it tore. So Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor relent, for he is not a man that he should relent. He did not obey the voice of the Lord. Now he claims, yeah, we were going to, we actually were just bringing these along because we're going to sacrifice them over here. That's not true. That's kind of a, that's kind of a, a wishy-wash uh, trying to fix the problem after the fact. They did not simply obey God. And notice this important principle here. It's a principle that all Christians should get clear into our minds, our thick, thick skulls. We need to understand this. To obey is better than sacrifice. But you'd think because of the way a lot of people look at it, huh, Jesus died for me. I can just do whatever I want. I can sin and he'll forgive me. I know that we don't think that out loud. We don't really even, even want to have that thought in our mind. And yet our behavior shows that that's really what's in our heart. That's really what's in our mind. That's really what we're thinking is, it's okay if I do these things, God will forgive me. And it says here, just as plain as could be, to obey is better than sacrifice. If we love him, we will want to do his commandments. But I think some of us don't love God just so much as we would like to let on or have other people think we do or that we would like God to think we do. Instead, we love doing it our own way, our own things. You know, I did it my way. That's the big song, right? Some decades ago. And this is the way we tend to live. God help us because it is better to obey than sacrifice. But the opposite of obedience is what? disobedience, but here we're told even more plainly, the opposite of obedience is rebellion. Remember that word, the opposite of obedience is rebellion. And so the king, God's king, has gone into rebellion. Now something else comes in here, we, we, have, we cannot miss it. He does suddenly become very repentant, or at least verbally repentant. But I want you to notice the argument that he gives us at verse 24. I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. I'm thankful that Saul understands the problem. It makes it real clear here that he does understand the problem. He feared the people. Hey, our task as followers of God in these days is to fear God and give glory to him, to respect him, to obey him. Anything else is rebellion. And here Saul says, I feared the people, and so I obeyed their voice. You know, that's an important step to repentance is to admit the actual the actual error, the actual sin. And so anyway, he turns to go, Samuel won't go with him, and he turns to go and his robe is ripped, and then comes the prophetic statement, God has torn the kingdom from you this day. Verse 29 kind of sums it up. God will not relent. You know, God, God is not going to be like you were, Saul, when you did what the people wanted. God isn't going to just cater to you and suddenly do what you want. God is going to do the right thing for all of his people. May God help us to do the right thing in whatever case we are for his people. Let's pray. So, Father, help us to be obedient to you in all that you command us and not to be rebels, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, friends, may it be true of us. Whatever God says to you, do it. Do it. And uh, the blessing will be upon us. We want to please men instead of God. May, you, may God be our helper to help us to please God first, always, every time. God be with you.